Hello YouTubers, this is the uh, first video in the series of videos about, you know, software patterns. Um, you know, uh, software really is about being able to visualize uh, real world problems and then model them into a software that can solve your problems. You're taking advantage of the power of computers and processing to solve real world problems. And patterns is one of those things that make, you know, solving problems a lot easier, especially when it comes to abstracting or, or abstracting the things that don't matter to the particular concern that, that you're worried about. Um, for instance, let's say you're walking into Starbucks and you're feeling sleepy, right? And you want something to wake you up so you can write some code or, or write a program for someone. So you go into Starbucks and you order a cup of coffee, right? And you pick up the coffee and use, use that power, that waking up power in the coffee to continue and, and with your day and go do your work. You have no idea how the coffee was made. It's not your concern. Uh, to worry about how the coffee was made. All you're worried about is that you need something to wake you up so you can go do your work. So think about that example for a second there. You really already, like the making of the coffee is completely abstracted from your day, from, from the details of your day, the context of your day. You want to go to work, you want to stay up, you're going to be sharp and awake, you go order coffee. Making the coffee is none of your concern. I made a little uh, a little example here. Let's say Carlos is feeling a little sleepy. He's ordering a drink. John is the barista at Starbucks, and John knows how to make the drink. Carlos just wants the drink, regardless of what that drink is. This is called the factory pattern. Factory pattern meaning that you don't want to worry about the making of the things that you want to use to go and achieve your purpose or your goal for the day, right? Carlos is talking to John, John knows how to do the, uh, the drinks and then comes back to Carlos and gives them the drink. Carlos have no idea how the drink is made. Let's write that into software. Think about this problem for a second there. Carlos could order any kind of drink. He could order any kinds of drinks, right? So we want something to represent the product. Always think about the product first. The thing that exists in all contexts of your software is the first thing you want to think about <clears throat> and then have everything else support that thing. So if you look at these two contexts here, you see a drink here and a drink here. You don't see Carlos here and you barely see John here. So what the first thing we want to build, we want to build the drink, the product itself. So let's go ahead <clears throat> and build the product. So I'm going to go in here and build an abstraction of drinks, something that represents all possible drinks out there that you could order from Starbucks. So let's call it iDrink. That's an interface. It's not a drink in and of itself. You say, I want a drink. That's not a drink. You still want to, to need to clarify what kind of drink you want, right? So let's build that interface. <clears throat> and with that interface, you want to get back a, a drink has a couple of things. Let's say it has a price and it has a size. Right? These are the two things. Right? And has, let's say, a making. So this is the making of the drink, right? Cool. Let's make, so now that we, we have the drink, we have that drink, we know that drink, let's go make a bunch of drinks under that drink. So let's support this idea, this concept of a drink with a bunch of drinks. So let's go ahead and create a couple of drinks, right? Let's go and build a tea. And let's go and build mocha. Mocha drink. Originally, I was going to say frappuccino, but it's very hard for me to spell. So I'm just going to say mocha, right? And both of these implement a drink because both of them are drinks, right? So they, they share that common 
abstraction of a drink, right? So let's put that guy public, and if you do control period, it'll go ahead and do the implementation for you, right? The making of the drink is something we uh, don't have to worry about for now. <clears throat> I'm going to build a constructor here just for fun and just to show you the making part and how far it is from you actually ordering the drink. So let's say you're getting here a list of stuff. Let's call them ingredients. We will not do anything with the ingredients. This is out of the, con the scope of this. I just want to show you this part. It's very important. And let's do the same thing with the, with the um, uh, let's say the mocha here is like $3. That's the price of the mocha, right? And let's say the size, it, it doesn't matter, whatever. And let's go to the T and let's do the same thing. Let's go and say public. Excuse me, T, and let's say I drink, and let's implement that. And the same thing goes with T. If it has a constructor, this constructor might take a bunch of ingredients. And I'll show you now how this is very, very cool, right? And let's say the the T costs, let's say five bucks, for instance. That'd be a very expensive kind of tea, right? The making and whatnot. That's not the point, right? So we, if you look back at your map here, the visualization, you made these drinks and you made this abstract. So you made the product that exists everywhere across these contexts, right? Now, after you've made all these products, you want to make the next thing that is common between all these contexts, which is John. John here is the, is the factory, is the guy, the thing that knows how to make all these products. So you see how we're building up, it starts with a product, whatever makes that product, and then the, the customer, which is Carlos. We're gonna get to that part in a second. So let's go build John. Uh, sorry, John, yes. So let's go in here and let's build a new class. And let's call it Drinks Factory. Oh. Seems like I've already did that. Okay, let's throw that away. Let's clean that code. You know, not any of that. Yep. <laughs> Unless it create a drink in here. And this, this drinks factory, what it's basically doing, it takes your order and it goes create that drink for you. Right? So I'm going to go ahead here and do this. I'm going to build a class that returns a drink. It's an abstract drink. I don't know what it is. Let's make it public, static and I drink. Someone might ask me, why is it static? I said, because we don't have, you don't create a new John every time you walk into Starbucks to order a drink. They don't, they don't make a new barista for you to go make a new drink for you. It's still the same barista. You don't have to replace that one. Let's, let's keep that one as a singleton. But you need to new up a new drink every time you make a, a, a you order a drink. So you need a new instance of a drink, right? So, so drinks factory, I drink, and then create drink. And create drink will take a string with drink, drink type. Right? It's making a string of a drink type. And now, what we want to do, <clears throat> we want to return the drink. Right? So we're going to do a switch statement and say, based on the drink type, if the drink type is mocha then go ahead and return new mocha drink with the ingredients and these ingredients let's put these ingredients in here these ingredients is something that we don't know about from a consumer perspective here here's a here's a bunch of so what are we doing mocha so maybe it's coffee and milk and other stuff Right? These are the ingredients and it goes and makes that for you. Right? And then if you have a tea or chai or whatever tea, we said tea, right? Then return new uh, tea with a bunch of ingredients. <clears throat> and let's say these ingredients are, you know, um, uh, black tea, hot water, you know, maybe sugar, maybe and other stuff. 
See these ingredients that we're passing in? We won't know anything about. Anything else, you will say, return null. Sorry, we don't have that drink, sir. I want lemonade. I don't have that drink, sir. All right? So you're walking into Starbucks, you're ordering something, you don't know how it's made, you just want the thing, and they go make it for you. And they pass in the ingredients, and, and things happen, right? Um, so now that we built John, this is John, and these are your drinks. Now let's go do Carlos, right? So let's go and say, uh, let's build our program here. Let's say console dot right line. Where is it? Do I need system? Okay, I need system dot here. Console dot right line. Welcome to Starbucks. I want you to live that story with me. Don't just just take patterns and go, you know, play with them. Just just live a story for a second, and then read line. And from read line, you want to say <clears throat> write line. What kind of drink do you want, sir? <clears throat> We're, we're, we're resembling the situation here. String, drink, kind. So you need to answer and say what kind of drink it is. Right? Cortana is very excited about this video. Don't worry about that. Uh, so drink, kind. Right? And then let's go and say... <clears throat> so now that you have the drink, kind, let's go get John. Right? So the drinks factory dot create a drink and you're passing in the drink kind. Well, you're passing a drink kind, but you're returning here a drink. <clears throat> because John will go make a drink for me and then come back and tell me here's a drink, right? And then after John is done with the drink, John is gonna say, that's, here's your drink. That's gonna be, and then they're gonna tell you what the price of the drink is. So it's drink.price. Right? Drink.price. Here's your drink, that's gonna be blah, blah, blah. Right? And then at the end, they'll say, <clears throat> thank you. And then we just wanna read key. So you see what's happening here? You go to Starbucks, you're ordering a drink. They'll take the, the drink kind, they'll go make it for you. Look at this class here. This class doesn't know anything about how the drinks are made, right? So let's go run and see how this, this works. <clears throat> Welcome to Starbucks. What kind of drink do you want, sir? And then I'm gonna say tea. Say, here's your drink, that's gonna be $5. All right, thank you, sir. So you see how we resembled that interaction, right? Someone might say, you know, what's, what's, what's the use of this? Oh, there's a lot of uses of this. You know, you could run with your factory, you could run methods to go say, you know, what kind of drinks are available, if the pricing is changing, all that you don't want to worry about. You have an interface, an interface for your end users, for your clients that says, Here's the information that you're looking for without you having to worry about the details. That's what the factory pattern is for. It helps you write cleaner code. It helps you build on top of other things, right? And not have to worry about the details. And so is a lot of code out there. Every class you're building out there, that, if that class is, is writing a, myth, a method, it's encapsulating you know, the details of this. But this makes it a lot easier. You, know, you don't have to new up uh, thinks all the time. Let that, let John new up a, a, a drink for you all the time and you just interact with John. I hope with that, that was simple for you to understand. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, recommendations, please go ahead and uh, put it in the comment section. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel and thank you for watching.